All right, good morning. We are, let's see here. Oops. Good morning. Welcome to this morning's uh, episode of Fear Hunters. We are going over your true authentic self. And uh, I just want to welcome you here. And we're so excited to get going this morning. Uh, welcome. As you come in the room, let me know where you're coming in from. And I am going live here on uh, Instagram, as well as YouTube, as well as uh, as well as YouTube, YouTube and uh, Facebook. So um, I'm, we've had a small little glitch that... Uh, bear with me here. We have a small little glitch that's happening on Facebook. So thanks, everybody, for coming in the room. And I'm going to make sure that this comes through okay for everybody. So just bear with me because I want to make sure that we actually have everybody. Welcome, Nadia and Jessica coming in from um, coming in from Anaheim. Uh, looks like Steve and Claire are coming in. Welcome, you guys. Glad that you're here. Uh, let's see. Episode. We're going. Every, every now and then you have a morning where things just go a little bit crazy with uh, technology. Um. Uh, let's, I'm just putting in this title here. Your true authentic self is what we are dis discussing this morning. And um, in this reading, I'm going to go through the chapter. Welcome, you guys. Glad that you guys are here. Welcome from Vancouver. I'm glad that you're here as well. Let me just make sure that this goes live and doesn't get cut off. Let's make sure and doesn't get cut off. Let's see if it works. It should work. Welcome, you guys. Hope you guys are having a great morning. Really excited. Go live. There it is. Now we're up and we're live on Facebook, you guys. Thanks for your patience. Uh, each morning, we read through a chapter of my new book, uh, Fear Hunters, which helps you overcome fear and shame, as well as anxiety and worry, all the, the roadblocks that are going to cut you off from uh, living your true, authentic self. And this morning, and this morning we're going to be talking about your true, authentic self, uh, which is called Decisive Victory. For those of you guys that are coming in on um, that are coming in on Facebook, sorry, we had a little technical glitch. I went live and then it just cut off and took me out of there. So glad that we're back on. Thank you guys for your uh, your guys' patience. Uh, Lisa, welcome from Spokane, Washington. Will, glad that you're here. Welcome. Good morning. We always have a pretty big group that joins us here in the morning from all over the world. So I just first want to say thank you. And by the way, uh, we're on chapter 17 talking about uh, your true authentic self. We're talking about chapter 18 tomorrow, preventive and maintenance for your active duty. Uh, we're then going to be talking about, uh, we only have a couple chapters left here. So we've got chapter 19, what it means to respond with gratitude to this newfound freedom that you have in your true identity as you walk in your calling. And then um, as we wrap things up, we're going to be going into one of my favorites, and chapter 10, unconditional surrender. And unconditional surrender is like when you when you're going to all chips in, what it actually looks like and some of the some of the, the symptoms and the telltale signs. Um, and you guys, and then we're done. We are done with this study. And we've been doing this for almost two months, two months, every single morning. And by the way, a lot of you guys have been watching those replays. Uh, so I'm really grateful for that. And you've been sharing them. So I just want to say thank you for everybody that's been showing your, your support. Two ways that you can show support. One, leave a message down below. Comments, comments, comments. Definitely helps with the algorithm and helps us get traction as well as hitting the share button down below. Um, today's uh, The way it's going to work today is I'm going to read this short, quick little chapter. Then we're going to go into some application questions. After that, I'm going to go into a little bit more personal application of how I've used these strategies in my life and the fruit that we're getting from it as a family and what it's doing in our business, and how it can help you. Um, as we look back, there are three specific sections of Fear Hunters. There's three specific sections. The first section of uh, part one is all about diagnosing what fear is, what it looks like, what anxiety, what worry, what, what are all the symptoms, what is everything that you've been dealing with, and you're going to see those in part one. Like We have to expose all of them and make sure that you understand the enemy that you're fighting and clearly define it so that you know um, how to recognize it as you move into the, the other two parts. Part two is all about, once it's been diagnosed, then we're basically going to go up on the operating table. We're going to cut ourselves open. We're going to do the hard work of going deep into our wounds from our past that have 
kept us locked away in lies, locked away in vows, and, and, and subconsciously, we're making our decisions today. Our choices today, our decisions, our outlooks, our behaviors, all of it is running through that filter from the past. We got it from somewhere. But for most people, they're having the, their symptoms in their life of anxiety and worry and fear, shame, uh, and life being driven by lies and fears subconsciously without even knowing it. And so it's a massive blind spot. Fear Hunters goes back. We look, we diagnose, we expose, we find out what they are. Then we got to do the, then we got to do the surgery on it. That's part two. So now you're going to have the strategies to go in, visit the child within, talk to the child within, disarm the bombs, dismantle all the fears and the shame. This is a lot of forgiving, a lot of soul work, a lot of sitting down with the Lord quietly with your journal, unpacking stuff that you just made agreements with, vows, lies, resentments that you've held on to, grudges. I mean, all of that toxic stuff is like doing a house cleaning. And so we're going to go, we go back to that in part two. Now, as a result of that newfound freedom that, hey, I not only recognized, was able to diagnose what was going on and then do the actual work on it. Now that I'm freed up, what do I do with all that newfound freedom? What do you do with all that new bandwidth of time? You've got more things to do with your talent. You've got more things to do with additional revenue. You're looking at everything through a completely different perspective and you have this newfound freedom in your true identity. That's what we're talking about now in today's chapter. What's happening moving forward with this newfound freedom that you have as a result of the work that you will continue to do the rest of your life. Hey, I just got triggered by something. What's my strategy? My strategy is I go get quiet. I drill down deep. I talk to the child within. What's going on? I talk to my heart just like David did. Talk to my heart. What do you need? How can I help? Tell me about that moment. What just got triggered to you? This strategy, you guys, if you don't have this strategy, you will be you will be the way that you are the rest of your life, most likely dealing with the symptoms and the aftershocks of traumas from your past, things that went sideways. You will flatline in your emotional intelligence and your self-awareness, and you will discover that you aren't accelerating. And here's a couple telltale signs. You aren't accelerating in joy. You're not accelerating in generosity. You're not accelerating in your relationships. If you get a relationship, you don't keep them. They don't nurture and become better over time. There's an avoidance of like, there might be an avoidance. There might be uh, where um, engagement, meaning like whether it be a client, whether it be a friend, whether it be in a community, there might be engagement might feel strained. Basically what we're talking about is the, the, the traumas or the symptoms of the past can be echoing right now as aftershocks in our life subconsciously. We're not even aware of it. And what it's doing is it's almost like a repellent. It's almost like we, we have a smell on us that we're not even aware of. And for a lot of us, that has to do with our identity. We are, uh, when you're, and we use a term when I'm talking and I'm coaching with my clients and students and stuff is this, you're operating from a wound. And you don't even know it. I did for so long. Easy to be the victim. Um, easy, easy to be, easy to be the victim. Easy to be the the one that's just it's everybody else's problem. Why my my life is the way that it is. You blame everything on everybody else. Everybody else is why I am the way that I am. Oh well, this is the the family that I grew up in, and this is just the way my dad was. So I'm this way, and this is just the way that I'm wired because our whole family's wired. Well, you know what, God has made it clearly defined in his word and through our time and our study together, reminding us of his word. But the truth is you are a one of a kind, unique masterpiece created in Christ Jesus for his glory to live out his calling through your life. And if you match that and partner with him in that, you will realize that you have a whole new opportunity to step into an incredible new life with him defined by him, led by him, invited by him. And he snaps off the review mirror of your old life, your new life moving forward. There's no looking back. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Behold, the new man has come. The old things have passed away. 
and the new things have come. So that's what's exciting about this, this process that we're going through. So you guys, this, this makes a massive, um, this makes a massive, massive, massive uh, difference in how you approach the rest of your life. Um, oh, you know, I want you guys to realize a few things here. There has been, uh, Bob, my mentor and I, we did a, a live stream uh, yesterday. And one of the things that was, exp one of the things that, you know, with all this, everything from the pandemic to um, everything that's happening in news and all, just all this outrage, it's just absolutely bonkers, right? So I, I, I personally don't go on social. I don't watch the news. I, I'm too focused in the day on what I do have control over, and that's making a difference. We're doing everything that we possibly can to impact through our ministries and the partners and the relationships that we have. And there's a ton of stuff um, that's going on. And we want to be a part of the solution and providing hope. Um, that's my main focus every single day. It's like, okay, wake up, pull all this together. Let's provide hope. We live in a really crazy time. We live in a really uh, tumultuous um, moment in history and in this world. And that I do have control over. And, um, you know, I really want to help you guys. Really want to help you guys as you look at stepping into your true authentic self and in your own true authentic identity. That is what we do have control over, doing the work with ourselves and moving forward in with confidence today. So that is my prayer for you. As we wrap up this study, I mean, we've been going for almost two months. We did 31 disciplines. You know, that was 31 days. And we're going to wrap up June here going through um, uh, Fear Hunters. So I could not be more thankful that you guys are all here. And Dave, I'm glad that you're here. Amber, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that everybody's here. Um, here's, here's what Bob and I were talking about yesterday was basically this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of questions that are going on around these days. There's, there's so much whirlwind and confusion, but here's the one awesome answer that has always remained the same. That we as believers want to be able to, first Peter talks about it. We as believers want to be able to have an answer for the hope that we have. My prayer for you guys today, my question for you guys today before we even get into this today, because I know everybody's a little winded, everybody's a little bit tired, everybody feels a little bit taxed from the chaos, but let me just tell you this. Let me answer the question, answer this question in, in the comments down below. Who and where are you getting your hope? Who and where are you getting your hope from today? Who and where are you getting your hope from today? And Bob and I's challenge to everybody is to ask that question to everybody that's in your life. Ask that question, who and where are you getting that hope from today? And it's really gnarly. But first, when we look at First Peter, it talking about believers, may we be prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have. So my brothers and sisters all around the world, my friends, everybody that's listening to this, whether you're watching the rerun or whether you're watching it live now, my encouragement to you, listen, this replay is going to be up four years from now. We will look back on these times. This same message, this same message of what we're talking about today, the hope that is in Christ was the same message that I was speaking last year and the year before that. And the year before that, and the year before that, and my dear friends, all of this message and the truth and the consistency that is in Christ, that he is unfailing, always loving, his word never returns void, and he is the one true constant that you can put the full weight of your glory in on a daily basis, not your finances, not your family, not the outcomes of circumstances or happenings, but everything today sits on the foundation that Christ is 100% in control, 100%. Here's the best thing about God's track record. He not only controls the believers, he controls the unbelievers. There's a lot of people out there that don't, that don't think he's in control. Like, listen, he controls 
kings and the hearts of kings, whether they love him or not, God is in control. And he's been on his throne for a very, very long time. And even more, he saw this coming. He saw this coming. But you know what the best news is? The answer is still the same. No matter what the questions are, the answer is still the same. It is him. It is 100% him. So friends, my, my compulsion is to always ask where, with everything that's going on right now, everybody wants to see knee-jerk reactions. So a few things you can do to ask yourself. And I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself on application here because we haven't done the reading, but let me just tell you this. One, does it need to be said? Two, does it need to be said by you? And three, does it need to be said right now? My friends, my encouragement to you today is that you have an absolute answer, as First Peter talks about, that you have an absolute answer for the hope that you have, that you are prepared to have an answer for that. Because quite frankly, that's what really matters. May the, in, in Romans, it also says, may the God of hope fill you. May the God of hope, what kind of God is he? He's a God of hope. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace. May you overflow with it so that you may abound. You may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you will overflow and abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Is that on your heart today? My prayer is that it is on your heart today. Let's talk about chapter 17 as we dive into the decisive victory in your true authentic self. Uh, Barbara DeAngelo says this, we need to find the courage to say no to the things that people, uh, no to the things and people that are not serving us if we want to rediscover ourselves and live our lives with authenticity. So for all you codependents out there, which I was, <laughs> boy, the, this, uh, you want to know the, 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 the deepest uh, definition of the deepest definition of a um, codependent is if you jump off a bridge, somebody else's life passes before your eyes. And uh, I was one of them. Uh, yeah, I was a mess. Um, we need to find the courage to say no to the things and people that are not serving us if we want to discover ourselves and live uh, our lives with authenticity. Lance uh, Secretan, a leadership theorist, says this, authenticity is the alignment of the head, the mouth, the heart, and the feet, thinking, saying, feeling, and doing the same thing consistently. This builds trust, and followers love leaders they can trust. As a, bo as a boy, I was uh, a crucial period of the time where I was bullied and harassed. There was a crucial time where I was bullied and harassed. I remember this physical education class that I took in eighth grade vividly. After class was over, all of us boys smelt to high heaven, yet still had the rest of the day to spend at school. Or so, and by the way, for those of you who just joined us, you got a lot of new people that are, have just joined us. I do a quick little reading. We do a little quick question and answer, and then we do application after the fact. And um, so if you're wondering why I'm reading out of the book, that's why I'm reading out of the book. Um, for some reason, I was the only boy who would shower. I couldn't stand the idea of body odor and sweat for the rest of my day. And I remember being really embarrassed and concerned about my body. The boys made fun of me for being the only one naked out there in, in, in front of 30 other guys. We lived in an area where it could get down to 30 degrees in the morning. I would strip down, keep my back to the crowd and freeze. I remember the, I remember the fear each day as PE would finish. However, the feeling of a strong workout and sweat flowed by a, uh, followed by a clean, crisp shower was so refreshing and it was all worth it. I think the showers played a key role in my identity growing up. I might not have the shape and body I wished I had, but I was being myself. By taking showers, I kind of set the tone for the other guys. Uh, the other guys. Soon, a couple of other guys started taking them, and then there were a few by the end of the year. I had to take care. I had to uh, care more. I had to care more about what mattered to me rather than what made my decisions based on what I thought others would feel or think. I remember being called names and having them make fun of my body 
This was a moment of authenticity for me growing up, but these were few and far between. Now, thinking about my own kids and having to take showers in front of their whole class almost brings me to tears. It's kind of like uh, facing fears and shame with the courage to be yourself that really moves me. I wouldn't want to be uh, them being exposed to the possibility of, or let alone endure, being taunted by their peers, for sure. I share this story because it perfectly illustrates the fact that living our authentic selves often means that we must drop the proverbial fig leaf. Even though I was made fun of for showering, it proved to me that our true identity requires exposure and the risk of being seen for who we truly are. Full exposure before God and man means that we have to let down our guard and our and carefully crafted external facades. Fear hunting mandates hunting down the fears and shame that we have allowed to rule us. Embrace the reality of them, eliminate them, and then drop the fig leaf. It takes a lot to keep the fig leaf in place. Running life with one hand holding the fig leaf and doing the rest of life with the other hand is difficult to manage. I had asked myself what might happen if I lived authentically, being true to who God created me to be. I imagined embarrassment and failure as well as not being accepted and experiencing loss of connection. Alternatively, in the name of, in the name of self-preservation, I would play life safe, stonewall my feelings and hide my identity to live a lie. I want to encourage you to be proactive to monitor your heart and daily drop the fig leaf. Being intentional in the ongoing maintenance of your true identity by using the chapters in this book and hunting targets to proactively fight fear and eliminate it. Don't allow fear to trick you. We can erase the fear and shame of the past that have held us back. But as we move forward into new seasons in life, we can make new arrangements with subtle lies without even recognizing it. I have found that I have to stay in an inventory mode on my heart weekly and sometimes even daily because there is an enemy that doesn't sleep. He works 24-7 and changes his strategy to try to take me down. He doesn't want me to be effective, to see my dreams getting launched, and he certainly doesn't want people coming to know God's love. The more my faith increases and my life progresses God's mission, the enemy will run greater interference. It's expected because that's the war that we fight, and it's actually the fight that continually makes us stronger. Dropping the fig leaf requires vulnerability, and it requires courage, but the payoff has such great rewards. God has designed you and me as one-of-a-kind originals, and his craftsmanship isn't flawed. He creates masterpieces. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. David says this, I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very, very well. Here's your hunting target. That's our reading for today. And here is your hunting target question that I'm going to ask you to dive deep. And I, I want you to answer me. <clears throat> I, want you to, I want you to answer me by putting this, this answer down in the, in, in, the, in the comments. So on YouTube, on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, in the chat, if you want, which is there in, let me make sure here. Uh, if you are on uh, Facebook, leave me a comment down below. And then on Instagram, leave me a comment in, um, in your answers to this question. Daily, I want to ask yourself this. If I could be and do anything that I wanted in glorifying God with my time, talent, and treasure, what would I do today? Not years from now. But if I can use my time, my talent, and my money to glorify God, what can I do? To, what, can I, what seed, the seed capital of God's love on your life, the time that you've got on this earth, the money that you've got in your bank account, everything that he's entrusted to you with the stewardship, what would you do today if you could do anything to glorify him with your time, talent, and money? What would you do today? Leave me a comment down below as I take a sip of coffee and then we're going to go into some application. And then we're going to move forward. Leave me a message down below. Leave me a comment. What would you do today with your time, talent, and money that you can do to glorify God today, not tomorrow, weeks from now, months from now, years from now? I'd love to hear this. Amy says a self-tape 
monologue. Unpack that a little bit. I want to know what that means. That sounds cool, though. I'd love to hear that. Tom says, to be comfortable with myself and believes to spread the word of God. Great. How? So here's the thing. That sounds great. I want everybody to say what they would do, but I want to know how they would do it. So when I'm mentoring and coaching folks, this is where like we hold their feet to the fire. And Robin says, continue writing on my book. It's coming out good. Thanks to you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So I really want like, that's awesome, Robin. So you're saying, Hey, I want to, I want to finish writing my book. I want to be able to, I want to take that. Okay. So the, the book is great. That's the, what the how's going to be, how am I going to use that to glorify the Lord in the bigger picture of things? And how is it going to be an asset that I can use? For example, some people have a job and they have a business and they think that it's boring and mundane and it has no identity. It's not doing much of a great thing. But the moment that you actually take your business and your job, switch that perspective into realizing that your business and job is actually a way to make money to underwrite a kingdom initiative. Purpose on your business goes from being a business to a kingdom business. You can glorify God, not just with, you know, yes, you sure you can just write a check or give at church or whatever, but what are you doing? What's what problem are you solving today that puts a smile on God's face? It's pleasing to him and makes your heart come alive that you absolutely love. Because if we're just looking at these circumstances in life and just making as much money and getting as, as comfortable as possible and getting things to be as peaceful as possible and green pastures, we're missing the point, man. We're missing the point. Let me read just a couple of these things. Um, Lisa says, today I could text and or call at least three people to provide some encouragement. This takes hardly any time at all. And there's no excuse for me to not do this. Lisa, I love it. It's the, it's the what and it's the how. And I think one of the greatest things is when you intercept people with love and be a disruption of love on that, you're being true and authentic. So one of the things that we can do is to be 100% authentic in that. And most of the time, we're going to give the love language that we want to receive. If it's words, if my love language is words of affirmation, I'm most likely going to give words of affirmation all the time. If it's acts of service, it's acts of service. If, it's, if it's gifts, I'm going to give gifts. If it's quality time with people, I'm going to, I'm going to be calling up to give quality time with people. These are ways that you're going to be able to reach and engage people with a beautiful disruption of God's love. And using your influence of your time, talent, and money in, in order to do that. Lisa, I think that's a great one. Mike Taylor says, assist recovering alcoholic addicts to find their way back to the workforce. Great. Mike, how's that going to happen today? What's that look like today? What step can be taken today? What micro step can be taken today on that? I love that. Mike, great job, bud. That's awesome. Chuggy says, give thanks to God and give back. Get back to the church and cook at the church for people that may come when we open. Awesome. What are you doing now? What can be done today? The phone call to set that up. The, 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 who can we be feeding today? What steps can we be taking now to put those into practice and to put those into play right now? Very, very exciting. Love it. Marilyn says, uh, interpretive dance. Uh, for my trainer, I can only imagine. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Marilyn, so how, how? How is that going to be done? When is that going to be done? Robin says, it will encourage and hopefully uplift many who don't know why they are on God's big earth. Great. What if we started taking little excerpts from the book and started posting that on social media, getting comments and, and maybe even talking about it? Here it is. I'm reading my book. And it's just a way that I want to be able to help provide fruit in people's lives um, through an engagement. So you could be leveraging uh, parts of your book, Robin, which I think is great. Tom says, finishing my art with the story of God's word and application to today's faults and fixes. Great. Where? How? David says, actually talk to one person today and really see them. Give them my undivided attention and show them people care. Let them know there is still love in the world. Absolutely. The best part is disrupting people, disrupting people from their normal mundane life. Can you be a beautiful disruption through your genuine, authentic self that absolutely cares? Stepping out of yourself and being, listen, if you want to fix yourself, you get fixed when you're serving other people. I'm just telling you that right now. You get fixed when you're serving other people. 
So if you think you're broken, if you think you got a lot of work to do and you can't step out yet, you got to go to seminary and you got to be a pastor and you got to know your Bible back and forth. No, you don't. You just got to have the guts. You got to have the courage and the grit to get up, get it done, step out, get it finished and actually show tangible fruit of what you what you're going for. Let's look on Instagram here just for a few. Scott says uh, to sow into my kids in a deeper way. Had talks with two of them about Jesus being love and the answer. Scott, I think that's wonderful. And one of the things that I teach in 31 Disciplines is one of the daily devotions is best days with your kids. Taking them out, underwriting them for the day, doing whatever they want, wherever they want. They can eat as much as they want. And you are just the underwriter of their genes, of, of their dreams. And I'm, can, I, you know, we had a big gnarly day yesterday. Um, uh, a little instance in our family with uh, a driving situation. It went sideways, but it was okay. And everybody's fine. But there's a wonderful lesson that just teaches um, there's rogue waves in life when it comes to kids and there's rogue waves in life in general, just with everything that we've got dealing right now. But are we going to rise above our circumstances? And I just, Hey, I'm saying all dads out there, we've got father's day coming up. Let me just be very clear with you. Your wife, your children, they're going to look to you as the leader to set the pace. They're going to look to you as the leader to set the pace. I'm talking to all men out there, all dads out there. They're looking to you to set the pace. And the majority of kids are not going to become who they are by looking back at what you taught. It's going to be by what they caught. They're going to, it's, you can teach all day long, but what they're really going to do is going to be everything that they catch you doing how you they're just going to catch what you do and your your behavior and your response to all these times your behavior and your response to crisis your behavior and your response to do they react or respond are they cool calm and collected is my dad following himself or is he following his heavenly father who's doing the leading so I want to encourage you dads out there. Scott, wonderful job pursuing the hearts of your kids. And for me, I have to be so intentional. For me, I have to be way slowed down. For me, I have, I, listen, and here's what's amazing. I'm, I'm doing a big time build right now for a big client. And um, it's a massive family oriented uh, platform all about parenting. And it's revealing so much. I'm, 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 I just love it. But there's some crazy statistics that are happening out there right now. Do you realize that the father in the home is the number one reference for children as to what God actually looks like? The father in the home is the children's first glimpse of what God's character actually looks like. And I did it. I took my dad's relationship with me and I pro projected that straight on the God and said, oh, so God is exactly like him. But I want to encourage all you dads out there. We're not getting sidetracked, but I want to encourage you in that. Um, let's see what else. So, Scott, that was great. So into your children. I think it's awesome. Um, Ava said, um, start my paintings to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Good for you. That's awesome. Uh, Scott said, gave a financial gift to a friend in need. Ask God for more opportunities to give. I love that. Uh, Sharon Lynn said, I'd like to go and pray for elderly people, nursing homes, and just listen to them share their hearts. That's great. Uh, just said, uh, share my story with others and how I have second chance of life because uh, uh, of God saving me. Okay, here's what I think is really, really interesting, you guys. These are a lot of great ideas. But again, dreams with uh, dream or uh, dreams without deadlines are, are dreams. Dreams are just goals without deadlines. That's it. Dreams are just goals without deadlines. I want to encourage you guys to put deadline. How are you going to do this today? We're not, we were saying we're not talking about months from now and other days from now or grandiose ideas. What practically today, what work at the end of this day, you can look back and say, hey, you know what? Dave said, hey, I'm going to go and intercept people and really be 100, 100% genuinely authentic and listening and present. That's people really do care. Great. Great. 
So it says, I'm going to call and share God's promises through scripture with a couple of my friends that are scared and confused. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Todd says, continuing developing my first ever worldwide Subaru podcast. Boom. Let's go. Somebody's got to do it. Get it done. Joe says, I'm putting the content together and online structure doing overcoming anger, love, learning experiences together to launch in two weeks. Love it. Joe, I also know that you, you reached out about the accelerator and going through that for all those, um, everything that's needed to be able to take your, your, your course online and all that. Feel free to reach out to us. I want to make sure that you got all the answers. It's been a really busy time. So just want to make sure you're stacked and ready to go. Aaron, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Susan, glad that you're here. Sarah, I'm glad that you're here as well. So as we looked at it, today we're talking about dropping the fig leaf and being your true authentic self. You guys, I find it really unbelievable that one of the tests that I do with a lot of the leaders that I work with that say, hey, if I put $52 million in the bank, what you would you do today? And after all the traveling and after all the things that they would do that they would say define and they'd be, they've been holding out for, they'd look back and they'd say, listen, oh man, I would go into so many other things. And what it really reveals is that the moment they feel that they're sacked away with the security of cash, that their life isn't going to go away if they actually do what they've always dreamt of doing and being 100% real, saying what they want, being what they want. But don't you think that is interesting that the number one driving fear is the fear of the loss of connection and the fear of the loss that they're going to lose finances, which means that they then lose, they can't stay in their home, which means they can't eat, which means, and this is unbelievable self-talk that's going on inside your head that if you are truly 100% who you believe God called you to be, that you're going to lose everything. Jesus says this, those that are willing to be an absolute fool for me, those who are willing to lose their life, lay, their down, lay down their life for my sake, will certainly gain it. Will certainly gain it. Those that are willing to drop the fig leaf, be, stop being the poser. You guys, I was the poser and it took way too much work. It was exhausting on a daily basis to try to keep up appearances. There were days where I just had to say, guys, I don't have any fuel in the tank. I'm being honest with you. I don't have fuel in the tank. You can, I mean, there's people that like might need to say that today. I'm flipping gassed. And I'm trying to keep up personas that I've got everything going on okay. I get it. I get it. Are you being 100% real? Are you basing your decisions? Are you playing it safe? Are you trying to not piss off anybody? Are you trying to not create any waves? Are you, are you willing to be real? Your true authentic identity is important because when you come out of a wound and when you've been managing a false self and a poser identity for a majority of your life because you were operating out of a wound, Fear Hunters has revealed that you can be freed up. And as you step into freedom of all of this newness, the opportunity is you get to be real through your unique masterpiece that God's created you to be. You were created in Christ Jesus to go and do amazing Amazing good works. My friends, I'll just kind of drive it home and, and kind of land it on this. Today, <clears throat> excuse me, the filters for my life. Is today going to go into the shredder or is it going to go into the eternal vault? Is today going to be another day where I simply am very, very busy, but I produce nothing? Or... Am I going to look back at today as today was an incredible investment? Today was an incredible investment. I can waste my time today. I can spend my time today. Or I can invest my time today. Am I stepping into my true authentic self of who God's called me to be? Now, let me talk to you about how I personally apply this. Here are my questions I ask myself every single day. And you can use this if you'd like. You don't have to. I do share about my, my faith. I do talk about my own testimony. So take what you like and leave the rest. But <clears throat> I have to ask myself today with my time, talent, and treasure, is what I'm doing today going to be waiting for me in eternity? That's a big one. Is what I'm doing today going to be waiting for me in eternity? When we look in Corinthians and Paul talks about, he says, listen, 
we're all building on a, the same foundation. The foundation is Jesus Christ. But each one of us should build this life with care. And you're either going to build this life with wood, hay, or straw, or you're going to build this life with precious stones and things that will not burn. What, what is the treasure of God as you stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ? That is people, souls. The most important thing, the most important thing is souls. People is what matters to God most. Now, what most believers think is, hey, I'm saved by grace. Awesome. Yeah, you didn't do anything to earn it. I now have grace in my heart. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. There's nothing I can do to earn it. There's nothing I can do to lose it. Once I am in the family of God, I have the inheritance. I am an ambassador of Christ. I have every single resource financially. I have every connection. I have every single thing needed in my life to accomplish his will in my life. Now, what most believers do is they go, that's awesome. Thank you for the Willy Wonka ticket. I'll put that in an envelope, put it on a shelf along with my Bible, and I'm going to go live a life, stay out of trouble, kiss my way to death, try to retire and get things as cush as possible, and I'll see him in eternity. And I think it's going to be a pretty cool place. Let me tell you the good news, my friends. When I wake up in the morning, I know for a fact that heaven is real, that eternity is a very long time. And that my life is going to be measured once I become saved in Christ till the day that I die. My time, my talent, and my money is going to be measured. How is it going to be measured? What is the return on investment that Christ as my investor, what's the ROI he's going to get from our lives? It's not just the good things that we did. But what are the God things that we did? Because when... You want to talk about the ultimate identity crisis when God came up to, to Peter. <clears throat> Jesus looks at him and he says this. He goes, listen, do you love me more than those fish? And he goes, I do. Now, I want you to talk about an identity crisis here for a second. Peter sees his entire identity in what he does for a living. It's being a fisherman, and so was his dad and his grandfather and all that. Peter thinks for the rest of his life, there's nothing he's going to do but be a fisherman. And when God, I mean, God intercepts him right there, and Jesus is standing in front of him and says, hey, dude, do you like me more than these fish? I love you, Lord. Really? Do you love me more than these fish? He's like, uh, yeah, but do you love me more than these fish? Now, if I'm Peter, I'm going, why is Jesus asking me the same thing three times? Something is up. Something is up. If you're Peter, what are you thinking? Because that is what, this is what Jesus is asking you right now watching this. Do you love me? Jesus is asking. Do you love me more than your kids? Do you love me more than your marriage? Do you love me more than the business that you think you own, but I gave it to you? Do you love me more than all the possessions that you have, the house that you live in, and the cars that you have? Do you really love me more than all of that? Really? What was his response to Peter? He said, come follow me. And the first thing that Peter did was, but what about these fish? What was Christ's response? You think you've been fishing, but I'm going to make you a fisher of men. My dear friends, if you're watching this right now, let me be very, very clear. This might be the biggest wake-up call ever. You think that your name is your name? You think that your life and what you're doing right now is the calling that's on your life? He's got a plan for your life, but you need to take your earplugs out so that you can hear his screaming whisper and his loud pounding knock on the door of your heart that he wants to talk to you. And are you willing to listen? And then are you willing to respond? One of my favorite quotes is from a dear friend, Nate, and we were just talking about this last night. When you're not afraid of dying, when you're not afraid of death, and you have no more fear of death, you've taken away your enemy's number one weapon. My friends, I sat in my studio just a couple years ago, not a couple years ago, back in 
2002, 2003. And that was my moment of crisis of belief. And what that includes is the day that I had to put my life, my wife, my children, my agendas, my dreams, my hopes, my expectations, my resentments, my lack of forgiveness, the underbelly, my muck and mire of everything that I had become and put it at his feet in his lap and say, Father, it's all yours. I'm willing to die and I'm done. And remember him basically saying, it's that when you're at the end of your rope is when I can start to do my greatest work. Some of you might be feeling like you're at the end of your rope. And there is a bigger cost to not live in yourself, your true authentic self than there is to try to keep up appearances with being a poser. But when you're not afraid of dying, you know, people are like, how are you dealing with all these crazy times and everything that's happening right there? And when everything that's happening with social media, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Those that have their hope in Christ Jesus are like corks. No matter how hard you try to hold them down underwater, they're going to pop back up. People are like, where the flip do you get that kind of, like, where do you get that hope? In Christ and in Christ alone. We cannot be shaken. Even if and the verses even say, even if the earth trembles and the mountains crumble into the sea and the whole thing implodes. You can take my physical body, but the enemy can't have our souls. But the enemy is going to work. And I said this weeks ago, you guys, let me just remind you again. If the enemy can't take your soul, what's he going to work on? What else, what else can he do? He's just going to be the liar, the accuser, the counterfeit. And all he's going to do is do everything possible to rob your joy. So let me just ask you this. If you feel that the enemy is spending all of his time working on your brain on a daily basis, because if a believer's soul is secure in Christ, watch this. If a believer's soul is secure in Christ, what power does the enemy actually have over you? If he can't take your soul, he's going to do everything possible to rob your joy. Everything possible to rob your joy. Straight up. Guys, I couldn't think of anything more exciting than that quote that says, when you are not afraid of death, you have removed your enemy's number one weapon. When Peter sat at the boat and Christ finally said, come follow me. I know you found your identity in your, in your work. I know you found your identity in who you were as a fisherman and your family line and everybody where you came from. But when he says, come follow me, that's that moment, you guys. You want a peace that surpasses all understanding is knowing that your soul is secure and you are just all in. Lord, what do you want from me? Not, not what do I have to do to earn your love? Listen, because of Christ's work for your salvation, what he did for us, our life, we're working from salvation, saying, because of what you did for me, I'm leaning on the sword of self going, dude, what do you want to do with me? I cannot think of a more unbelievable, authentic, beautiful way to live, co-partnered with him, not keeping him a silent invest or a silent partner, but him with the with the checkbook, with God's checkbook and the blood of his son saying, I'm investing in you, putting you, I'm literally putting you on assignment on earth. I'm putting you on assignment on earth. My quiet, I, I just wake up when my feet hit the ground. Is what I'm doing today with my time, talent, and treasure going to be waiting in eternity? Am I only trying to do good things to stay popular and to seem politically correct? Or am I going to stand out and be what God's called me to be, a light on a hill? My friends, I am encouraging, be a light on a hill, a beacon of hope, because very so many believers are being afraid that, oh, if I actually say what I need to say right now, then I, I, everything's going to shut down. What customer are you trying to please? Are you pleasing God as your ultimate customer or man? 
Because if you're using man as your ultimate customer, let me just tell you what right now, you're not living your life. You're living everybody's life, but not yours. Everything according to them and not you. As a believer, we are wired and equipped. We are partnered with heaven, every resource, every, we are ambassadors. Like if I made you wear a uniform today as you walk out into the world to shine before men, you would act differently. You would talk differently. If you walked in and, and you were in the military and you were in a uniform, you would, your conduct would be different. We would speak different. People would notice there's a freak, there's a freak, there's something different here. There's a hope here. How do you get this hope? The hope is that we are partnered with the one true God who is unfailing, the most constant, consistent. His word never returns void. My friends, you focus on that. You won't bow out and get fully intoxicated and consumed by everything that's happened on social media and everything that's out in the world. You guys realize that, right? What do you have focus on living 100%? I mean, chapter 17, decisive victory. You're deciding to have victory, your true, authentic self, your identity in Christ as a result of going back to the wound, going back to the epicenter of where the bombs went off in your life, looking back. You can go back to the epicenter of where all the shrapnel went off in your life. Repair from that. Not only diagnose it, but help repair it. Healing with what Christ has done for you. Receiving the compassion of God. Yes, now we're done, but we're going to go play broken. No, I didn't go to seminary. No, I'm not a pastor. No, I wasn't fully equipped. But you know what? God is going to do his work through you beyond anything that you could possibly imagine. Why? Because you're leaving your ships and you're leaving your fish and you're saying, Lord, I'm making myself available to you. How do you want to work through me today? I'm going to, I'm going to be my true authentic self, dropping the fig leaf of my life. I'm going to, I'm going to stop being the poser. You guys, I could not think of anything more fun to do on a daily basis is to focus on what we do have control over. And the enemy is just going to chirp from the sidelines. Listen, chirp, 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 chirp. Here's who, you ain't this. You don't know how to do this. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose connection and love and money. And if that goes away, then you're going to have to go move into your mom's house. And then it's going to be like, great, dude, bring it. Worst case scenario. What's worst case scenario? Really? But everybody is going to listen to the lies of the enemy to retreat and get quiet and go suck your thumb in a corner and bow out when the Lord's saying, hello, is anybody going to join me? Is anybody going to join me in this most exciting adventure of building my kingdom? And I will reward. Listen, he's going, I'm looking for a few recruits. Anybody want to join me in this? And for those that you, I've got a pretty good incentive plan. Those that want to go from first soil in fear into into fourth soil living with me, I am going to increase it 30, 60, 100x. Anything you do in my name and invest in my name and defer to eternity, I'm going to bless you for it and I'm going to heap reward upon reward. And when you get here and you stand at the end of your life, we're going to high five and I'm going to look you in the eye and go, well done, good and faithful servant. You got it. Now, there's a lot of people that are in here that just escaped the flames and had the Willy Wonka ticket and went, dude, I made it. And there's nothing waiting for him. My friends, based on God's word, I want to be helping you. If you hang out in these mornings and we're just going to spend time together, one another, I want to help you become the biggest baller billionaire in eternity. And the Lord invites us into that opportunity. Salvation is the starting point of stewardship. Salvation and coming to know him is the beginning of our relationship and stewardship with what we do with the rest of our lives. For me personally, guys, I just got to ask myself, what is happening with my time, talent, and treasure as a result of today? Is it going in the shredder or is it going into the eternal vault? Rad. Okay. It's going into the vault. What do I do today on a practical level? I can talk that I'm a believer. I can talk about our missional focus. Where's my money going today in terms of generosity being unlocked, unlocked to be able to fuel the kingdom? Not just making people more comfortable. Where am, would Jesus write this check today? So that's what I do with my finances. Where are we giving today? What are we underwriting to? For us, that's, that's special needs AIDS orphans in South Africa. That's what our heart is at. On a local level, we're helping kids at the Orange County Rescue Mission through Wiffle Ball and leading kids to Christ. We're doing international work in with missionaries. We've got a diverse portfolio. But guys, I had to wake up and stop saying, am I trying to build a life of success? 
Well, my giant little bill of life is significance. I spent 38 years burnt out on a gold plated hamster wheel going, dude, I'm busy, but this is going nowhere. And there is nothing that's going to be waiting in eternity as a result of what I'm doing today. My friends, I want to encourage you guys with this. Take your time, your talent and tre treasure, what you do have control over today and defer it for kingdom purpose. I know that sounds like a big, crazy idea. But my friends, you have been given, if you are in Christ, you have been given the power and everything needed, everything needed to accomplish that. Everything, everything you need, resources, connections, underwriting, um, so everything, you are complete. The Lord's never going to send you out an assignment and leave you hanging. He's going to give you the mentors. He's going to give you the direction. He's going to give you the supplies. He always does, always, he always will. What has been a takeaway for you this morning? <clears throat> Number one, we asked if you could do anything that you wanted today to glorify God with your time, talent, and treasure, what would you do today? For some of you, that's stepping and putting the toe in the water. Good for you. For others, you're jumping into the deep end doing a cannonball. Good for you. But I want to hear what stood out to you today in a comment down below. And what do you want to do with what you heard today? It's one thing to talk about. It's one thing to say it. But what do you want to do today as a result of, of, about it? Lisa says this, salvation is the only first step. That's correct. Salvation is the starting point. It is not the end point. Salvation is the starting point. It is not the end point. As we start with our salvation, we work from that amazing free gift of God's grace. And we want to glorify him. What is God's number one treasure? It isn't stuff. It isn't things. It is people's hearts. God, you know, they always use a saying, wherever your, wherever your heart is, your treasure will follow. Wherever your heart is, wherever the weight of your glory, those things that matter most, your money is always going to follow it. Where was God's heart? It was for you. And God loved you so much that he whipped out his checkbook, took the one treasure that mattered most to him, with the blood of his son was the ink of his pen to purchase you so that you could live with him, co-labor with him, build his kingdom with him, and spend eternity with him going big. Think about that today and see how the rest of the world's chaos affects you. See how the rest of the world's chaos affects you. Let me pray for you guys today. I got to get out of here. My wife's birthday today, Chantel's birthday today. So we're going to go out and celebrate and, and make it a great day. I love you guys. And I'm praying. Uh, let me just pray for you guys. Heavenly Father, I pray your blessing over each and every one of my friends worldwide here. I pray blessing over their home, their finances, their children, their businesses, their influence, their time, their talent, their money, Lord. Help them to be wise stewards of what you've entrusted to them to glorify you. And Lord, to not focus on the circumstances and the storms that rage in the sea. But to be like you, Lord, where we can take a nap in the middle of the storm. Because our faith, our trust, our, our, the security of our soul is in your hand. Lord Jesus, we glorify your name. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the sacrifice that we get to be with you. I cannot, I cannot thank you enough. And Lord, may we not squander that beautiful, precious gift of your grace. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hope you guys have a good day. Got one minute left on Instagram. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys are doing good. Hey, for those of you that um, let me know on a comment down below what stood out to you today. Also, my book bundle, Fear Hunters book bundle, along with 31 Disciplines. All right. These two right here. And my testimony, which is called Speed Bumps, how to use life speed bumps as launching pads, all available, noahfineart.net forward slash book. Noah, what am I saying? NoahElias.net forward slash book. NoahElias.net forward slash book. You can get your book bundle there. 
uh, we'll send them out to you. For those that are looking to do the accelerator, please either look at my link inside my Instagram. You can go through that online accelerator. Um, but yeah, check it out. Let us know how I can help you guys. Looking forward to a great day. Uh, uh, just being able to have some Sabbath today with the family. We're going out on a boat cruise in the harbor. We're going to bless Chantel for being so amazing and how she has served our family so well. So I love you guys. You're awesome. I'll be here tomorrow, 8 a.m. Pacific, and we'll go into chapter. We got like two more chapters left, and we're going to rock and roll. Talk to you guys later. See you.